The horror film genre can be traced back to the late 19th century. It officially became codified when Dracula was released in the 1930s during the rise of Hollywood cinema in the United States. However, African Americans were shut out of roles, or their characters were sidelined, misrepresented, or stereotyped. That's until Dwayne Jones took on the lead role in the 1968 independent horror film Night of the Living Dead, and this marked the first time an African American actor was cast in an important role in a horror film. After the film premiered, Hollywood saw a surge in more black actors taking on the genre, and black horror turned into a full-blown subgenre aimed at black audiences. Since then, horror films and television series centering black characters and black communities have become the most in-demand cinematic genre. Unfortunately, there are quite a few of those films that were poorly received by professional critics, and a lot of times they got it wrong. Most likely because these same professional critics weren't the intended audience, so they didn't understand. Here is a list of the lowest rated black horrors that turned into cult classics. What do you think of vampires? Vampires? I think they're possibly the most fascinating world. More horrifying than Dracula. Black Avenger, Black Blackula, from American International Pictures. With the explosion of black exploitation films in the early 1970s, black filmmakers were looking to expand the subgenre. Black exploitations were intended for black urban audiences, starring black actors in key roles and centering black communities. Blackula was released in 1972 as the black version of the famous Dracula. The film follows an 18th century African prince, played by William Marshall, who is cursed by Dracula after he fails to agree to end the slave trade. Blackula awakens in the 1970s looking for revenge after being entombed for 200 years. He starts pursuing a woman who resembles his deceased wife, but her brother-in-law starts investigating him for a series of murders. Blackula went on to become one of the highest grossing films that year and is regarded as one of the films that kicked off the black horror phenomenon. The sequel, Scream Blackula Scream, followed in 1973, and other black exploitation horror films were made to compete with Blackula's success, like 1973's Blackenstein. But despite the film's cultural impact, Professional critics had mixed feelings about Blackula, referring to it as unconvincing and lifeless. But it was awarded Best Horror Film at the first annual Saturn Awards the following year. The film currently holds a 46% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. The mob has never seen anything like Sugar Hill and her zombie hitmen. <laughs> Blackula inspired a wave of horror movies starting African Americans like Ganja and Hess, Abby, JD's Revenge, and Sugar Hill, also known as the Zombies of Sugar Hill. American International Pictures, who had previously produced Blackula, was an independent production house that produced films at smaller budgets and focused on rising subgenres like black exploitation. They were responsible for films like Foxy Brown, Black Caesar, and Coffee. Sugar Hill is a 1974 American horror black exploitation zombie film directed by Paul Maslansky and starring Marky Bay as the titular character. It also starred Robert Quarry, Don Pedro Colley, Betty Ann Reese, Zara Cully, and Richard Lawson. The film's budget was set at only $350,000 and was shot on location in Houston, Texas. The plot centers Sugar, who works as a photographer and runs a nightclub with her boyfriend Langston. Langston is murdered by the mob after refusing to sell the club. Rather than go to the police, Sugar seeks out a voodoo priestess to get revenge. The priestess then summons a voodoo lord, who enlists his army of zombies to carry out the act. Critics had mixed reviews for the film. Some complimented the writing, while others called it goofy and terrible. But Sugar Hill is still one of the most underrated and important films of its era. It currently holds a 63% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes.
the producer of Menace to Society, and executive producer Spike Lee, will take you to the outer limits of the inner city. Welcome to hell! <laughs> Tales from the Hood. The black horror craze returned in the 1990s with the blockbuster hits Candyman and The People Under the Stairs. So many black filmmakers and directors were seeing success at the box office during this era across different genres. In 1995, Spike Lee executive produced the cult hit Tales from the Hood. It's an anthology film that tells four different stories based on issues the black community faced during the 90s, including police brutality and gang violence. The plot starts with three teenagers in Los Angeles visiting a funeral home to collect a stash. But instead, the mortician Mr. Sims shared with them a number of terrifying tales regarding his deceased clients. Yeah, the hood got me feeling the pain. Tales from the Hood deals with the horrors and what goes on in the neighborhood. They wanted to do something with me. Overall, we wanted to do some things that were real serious and we wanted it to be scary. It's a scary movie. The film features an ensemble cast of black actors like David Allen Greer, Lamont Bentley, Paula J. Parker, DeAndre Bonds, and Clarence Williams III. Tales from the Hood wasn't necessarily a box office hit, and it received mixed reviews from film critics. But nearly 30 years later, it remains one of the most popular black horror classics of them all. It's also important to note that most of the critics weren't black, and a lot of them took issue to the corrupt cop story. In an interview with Yahoo, the film's writer and director Rusty Condiff said, that story in particular upset our white audience. We had a few test screenings prior to release where we had a fairly mixed audience. And in the conversations at the end, a lot of white viewers did not believe that this was an issue and felt we were unfairly painting the officers with a broad brush of evil. At the time, I don't think those stories got the headlines they get now, mainly because there weren't cameras everywhere, but it was something known within the African-American community. The stories were passed on from one person to another and you'd hear about it in that way. It's still a valid piece today and remains very powerful, maybe even more so than it was then." End quote. Tales from the Hood currently holds an approval rating of 58% on Rotten Tomatoes. Show ass. <laughs> we don't go down without a fight, right? Right? Right. Ah! Leprechaun 5. Size doesn't matter when you're still the man. <laughs> the horror comedy franchise Leprechaun launched in 1993 with the first two films being theatrically released. But when both films saw disappointing sales at the box office, the studio decided to release the following sequels direct to video. Following 1997's Leprechaun 4 in space, Leprechaun in the Hood arrived as the fifth film in the Leprechaun franchise in March 2000. The film brought in the franchise's audience by focusing on a majority black cast. Set in Compton, Los Angeles, California, three rappers break into the home of a record producer played by Ice-T and discover a room full of gold along with a leprechaun played by Warwick Davis. They accidentally free the leprechaun and now he's out roaming the streets of South Central LA. In the end, he kills the rappers and recovers his stolen flute. Leprechaun in the Hood currently has a 33% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with majority negative professional reviews. Despite the overwhelmingly negative response from critics, the black community really enjoyed Leprechaun in the Hood, and the film became a staple in black horror and comedies, frequently being played on BET. A sequel also followed in 2003. The movie was so popular within the black community that in 2006, it sparked a viral Leprechaun sighting in Alabama. It was a hoax, but the community was just having fun. Curiosity leads to large crowds in Mobile's Crichton community, many of you bringing binoculars, camcorders, even camera phones to take pictures. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. All I gotta do is look up in the tree. Who else in the leprechaun say yeah? yeah! yeah! Uh, we don't get down to the bottom of this. Yeah, still on there, guy. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, man. 
This guy helping to direct traffic says he's prepared for his encounter with the leprechaun. He's suited up from head to toe. I'm gonna run a backhoe and uproot that tree. I wanna know where to go. I want to go. Give me the go. I want to go. This is Brian. If you uh, try anything funny, I'll shoot you. Women. Vampire in Brooklyn. I would love to have you for dinner. Comedian Eddie Murphy has been writing and producing his own film since the 80s under his exclusive contract with Paramount Pictures. He released a plethora of cult classics from the Beverly Hills Cop franchise to Coming to America. His final film produced under the partnership is Vampire in Brooklyn. The film follows Maximilian, played by Eddie himself, who arrives in New York as the only survivor on a ship full of vampires from a Caribbean island. Since his race of vampires have been wiped out by humans, Max searches Brooklyn to seduce a woman who was born to a vampire father, played by Angela Bassett, with plans of turning her into a full-blooded vampire and reproduce with her to keep the vampire blood pure. Along the way, he puts on different disguises to win her over, following Eddie Murphy's most notable theme of playing multiple roles in his film. Vampire in Brooklyn was written by Eddie, his brother and comedian Charlie Murphy, and their stepfather Vernon Lynch, while direction was handled by famed horror screenwriter and director Wes Craven. It opened in theaters on October 27, 1995, just in time for Halloween. But the box office numbers failed to meet the studio's expectations. Vampire in Brooklyn includes misogyny and also pokes fun at trans people, and received mostly negative reviews from professional critics who called it mediocre and unfunny. But those same words were often used to describe most of Eddie Murphy's films, and most of them still developed cult followings, surpassing $6 billion worldwide. In a later interview with Rolling Stone, Eddie explained why the film was a failure, saying, the only way I was able to do Nutty Professor and to get out of my Paramount deal, I had to do Vampire in Brooklyn. But you know what ruined the movie? The wig. I walked out in the long-haired wig and people said, oh, get the fuck out of here. What the hell is this? Wes Craven also spoke about the film's failure, saying, This was kind of a screwed up thing because I wanted to work with a big star. I suppose it could have been better if it were a horror movie, but it wasn't. Eddie didn't want to be funny. He wanted to be serious, and he was very difficult. Although Vampire in Brooklyn is seen as one of Wes Craven's worst work, it was considered Eddie Murphy's successful attempt at jumping into the black horror craze of the 90s. The film currently has an approval rating of 12% on Rotten Tomatoes. You are a supernatural high. <laughs> Bones is a 2001 American psychological horror film directed by Juice director Ernest Dickerson. This is one of those films that you'll always get mixed reviews about. The movie pays homage to black exploitation films of the 1970s and also stars Pam Greer, while Snoop Dogg plays the titular character. The plot starts in 1979, where Jimmy Bones is the most respected member in his neighborhood. He gets murdered by a corrupt cop and returns to the now ran down neighborhood 20 years later as a ghost out for blood and his killers. Four teens attempt to buy Jimmy's abandoned home where his tomb laid to turn it into a nightclub and flashbacks to events in the 1970s are shown throughout the film. Bones opened in theaters on October 26, 2001 to coincide with the Halloween season. But the film bombed at the box office, only grossing $8 million worldwide after spending $16 million to film. Bones also received generally negative reviews. Professional critics called it boring, seriously stupid, and fine trash entertainment. What were supposed to be jump scares weren't scary at all. The script wasn't that great, and the ashy military cinematography may throw viewers off. But if you look past those things, the film is actually entertaining. Bones currently has a 25% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. 
Since Jordan Peele's 2017 film Get Out, we have seen a resurgence of black horror in television and film, and they're all succeeding at the box office and with ratings. How would you guys rank these films? And drop some black horror film suggestions in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to BFTV for more content.